Hi everybody, Ryan Jackson here. Hope you're doing well. So we're going to jump into Article 230. There were actually a lot of changes that happened in Article 230. That's been the case for the last few code cycles. Uh, we're going to start with Section 230.2, .2, which talks about the listing requirements. So let's go ahead and jump in and see what Panel 10 was up to. All right, so Article 230, Services. 230.2, .2, Listing Requirements. The listing requirements were, were relocated here. Now, obviously, if that's all we did, I wouldn't talk about it. Uh, pressure connectors were also added, and so were absence of voltage testers, which I definitely want to talk about. Okay, so 230.2. .2. In the 2026 NEC, uh, they made two global changes to basically reserve the dot two section and the dot three section in every article. Remember, articles are always whole numbers, right? There's article 230, article 406, article 480. Sections are the decimals, so 230.2 .2 is a section. 408.6 is a section. So in almost all of the articles, the dot two section is reserved for listing requirements, okay? And the dot three section is reserved for reconditioning requirements. Now, contrary to popular belief, not everything in the NEC has to be listed, right? In fact, a lot of stuff doesn't. Motors, transformers, panel boards, switchboards, switch gear, uh, a lot of stuff does not need to be listed. And in the 2026 code, if you go to Annex A, uh, they actually broke it up into two parts. They have product standards for, require, for uh, equipment that's required to be listed and product standards for equipment that are not required to be listed. And the only reason I bring that up is if you ever get in a fight with somebody that says, hey, everything has to be listed, show them Annex A where it specifically says, here's stuff that doesn't need to be listed. But I digress. 230.2 has the listing requirements. So all through Article 230, there was a bunch of different things that had listing requirements, and we moved them into the dot two section, which is what we're supposed to do. Uh, the stuff that got moved, I'm not gonna spend any time on, right? It was already required, it's still required, not gonna touch it. Uh, the stuff that I think is of interest is what we're gonna talk about. So item one, meter sockets have to be listed unless they're supplied by the electric utility and under their exclusive control. Now, where I live, you would never see that. And when they put this into the code, oh, back in 2017, I think, maybe 2020, I was confused because I'm thinking, give me a break. That that never happens. No, you don't go to the utility and like they give you the meter socket enclosure to hang on the wall. Actually, there are some electric utilities that do just that. They say, listen, that's the only meter socket enclosure you can use. You're going to buy it from us. You're going to hang it on the wall. And that's just how it's going to be. Okay, you know, if you have that and the utility hands you a meter socket enclosure that's not a listed product, and they say, listen, that's the only one that we're gonna put a cash register in, what are you supposed to do? <laughs> so yeah, we want it to be a listed product unless the utility actually says you must use this one and it's not listed. Item two, and that's what we're looking at right here, is a meter mounted transfer switch. That also has to be a listed product. A meter mounted transfer switch, uh, as you can see, it, it slips between the meter socket enclosure and the actual utility meter. So you take out the utility meter, you don't, right, the utility does, <laughs> you take out the meter, you slip that thing in and then you put the meter back in place and it's a transfer switch, right? So you can actually connect your generator right to it and then when it senses a loss of power from the utility, it has a transfer, so it isolates the utility, right? And then your generator kicks on and it's unidirectional. So it goes into the house but not back to the utility so it doesn't kill any utility workers. Kind of a cool product. Check with your utility before you get one of these because a lot of utilities they just they don't like it and I it is what it is right if they say you can't use it you can't use it item three power distribution blocks have to be listed products so that would be um, you know the item that you would maybe put in a wire way to make multiple splices of, of power distribution blocks pressure connectors have to be listed products so that would just be like you know typically what you use for a, a, a lug right a lug has to be a listed product and then item five, devices for splices and taps, which are also usually pressure connectors. So that would be a power distribution blocks, a lug, 
twist on wire connector, push in wire connector, anything you're using to splice or tap service conductors has to be listed. And then new to this edition of the code, we recognize this thing in the picture, which is a permanently mounted absence of voltage tester. Now, I think these things are really, really cool. Uh, it's not something you're going to buy at Lowe's or Home Depot, right? This is not something that you're going to put on your house. Um, this is something that's going to go on on probably industrial or large commercial facilities, but they're super neat. So what you do, you can you can see the one that I have here uh, that my friends at Grace Technologies uh, sent me. So it's got these wire leads that come off the back of it and they wire into the panel board or the switchboard, whatever it is. And then on the front of the enclosure, you mount this thing and it will indicate that there's power on, right? So voltage if illuminated. So where you would use this, this is if you need to get into the equipment and verify that it's off, right? You're trying to measure voltage. What if you have a piece of equipment where the available incident energy, right, the nastiness of the fireball, is so huge that they don't even make PPE to protect you from it? What do you do, right? Because measuring for voltage, that's energized work, right? Verifying absence of voltage, that's energized work. Well, what this would allow you to do and you can see right here, you put your test leads into this and you can measure line to line to line to neutral, all of those different ways. And it can, it can allow you to verify that it's off without actually opening the equipment and exposing yourself to, um, to a massive risk, right? So again, not something you're gonna see too terribly often, but they're, they're pretty slick. You can use this um, on a service, but it does have to be a listed product. Item B, listed or field evaluated. Service equipment that's not covered in 230.2A, which is what we just read, must be either listed or field evaluated. Okay, well, I had to, I, I relied on this one time as an inspector. I don't, I don't know if relied on it's the right way to say it. I enforced it, might be a better way to say it. Um, we had an installation in the city that I used to inspect four years ago where it was just motors, right? The whole installation was just a bunch of motors. So they installed a motor, uh, a motor control center, right, as the equipment. And they had a utility service, CT can, right? And then it went right into the MCC. Well, most motor control centers are not listed as service equipment because that's a pretty unusual application, right? Usually you're gonna have a switchboard, a panel board, maybe even switch gear if it's industrial, uh, but seldom do you use a meter, uh, an actual motor control center. So I did the inspection. It was not listed as service equipment. It was listed, but it wasn't listed as suitable for use as service equipment. So I had to write them up and I said, sorry guys, you know, 230.66 says it has to be not only listed, but listed as suitable for use as service equipment. And it wasn't. And they said, okay, well, what can we do? And I said, well, you can install a switch upstream, right? So you could get like a big 400 amp safety switch or you could call a field evaluation body and have them come out and do a field evaluation and they'll have the product standards and they'll be able to test things and everything else and see if they can actually just put the sticker that says suitable for use of service equipment as the result of an on-site field evaluation. So that's what it means when we have field evaluation, right? When I get it listed, I send the equipment to the testing laboratory. When I get it field evaluated, I have the field evaluation body come out and field evaluate it on site. Okay, so there you go, 230.2. Uh, not a lot new. Like I said, I wanted to show the absence of voltage tester because that thing's really cool. I also wanted to talk about the uh, meter mounted transfer switch. So next up uh, is gonna be section 230.46, which talks about splices and taps. That's been, um, I don't wanna say a controversial, but a, a rather important section and kind of a difficult one to comply with until relatively recently. So that's the topic of the next video. I hope you'll stick around for it and we'll see you then. Be safe out there.